The Man in Line with Andy Wint. Customary. Good afternoon. Welcome to Man in Line on Max Radio. We're open line through till one. Text one double six one double seven. WhatsApp same number. You'll need us in your contacts though. You can email studio at manxradio.com or call sixty six thirteen sixty eight. What's happening in Timwald at the moment? You heard that the health minister confirmed that DHSC won't challenge the three point two million pound award, but he has issued an apology. And Tim Glover has lost confidence in the government, he said. Uh, We heard what he said. He wants no part of it. Absolutely no part of it. Tim Glover. Doing nothing, or the bare minimum, minimum, is not enough here. Doing nothing when in full knowledge of what was at play is not good enough. Carrying out orders is no defence. I met with Dr Ranson on Saturday afternoon. She could only trust three politicians to meet with her. Ask yourselves, do you remember that? Trust. What I saw was truly shocking and terribly upsetting. Dr Ranson does not want the tribunal to be the end. We must honour that. It must not be the end. And I am grateful the Chief Minister has expressed those very sentiments earlier in the other place. Until this is honoured, I want nothing to do with the current administration, as I don't have confidence that they have grasped just how big this is and how essential it is for this administration to have any chance of success and fully implement its island plan. My challenge, therefore, is prove me wrong, and I hope you do. I really do. I hope you do. I passed a handwritten letter to the infrastructure minister as I stood up up to speak, and I will write later to the chief minister to resign as a department member. We have to and must do better. People need to be accountable, Mr President. The full power of the state must never be used to destroy someone and their career ever again. Let's face it. We haven't even got the apology right here. Sorry does seem to be the hardest word to say. It was done in a handwritten letter to advocates, not directly to Dr Rance. Tim Glover, MHK, today in Tinwald, uh, resigning and wanting nothing to do with the government. Uh, Have you got any thoughts on that? Arbury Castle Town and Maloo member Tim Glover made the announcement in response to that urgent motion from the Chief Minister following the outcome of the Dr Rosalind Ranson Tribunal. Lots more has, has happened, including the Health Minister, who's apologised to the Isle of Man's former medical director after she was unfairly dismissed for whistleblowing. Laurie Hooper, MHK, made an urgent statement in Timwell this morning after the medic was awarded £3.2 million by the tribunal, and he confirmed the department will not appeal the payout. Echoing the Chief Minister in the House of Keys last week, I would like to begin my remarks by offering a sincere apology to Dr Rosalind Ranson on behalf of the Department of Health and Social Care for the way that she was treated by the department. I also wish to underline at the outset a point which has been made on a number of occasions previously, namely that the department fully accepts the liability decision of the 11th of May 2022 and has not at any time sought to go behind it. The liability decision raised a number of queries around disclosure, which necessitated further inquiry, but there would always have been a hearing around remedy irrespective of these concerns, and I will cover both of these points further on. These proceedings, the disclosure and then the remedy hearings, were conducted within the parameters which were set quite clearly by the original liability decision, and the Department has fully respected them throughout. Honourable members are well aware of the level of public interest that these proceedings have attracted, and that, as the DHSC Minister, I have been unable to talk publicly in any detail about the Department's involvement in them. I can assure this Honourable Court that these constraints have left me as frustrated as you have no doubt been. 
Although the time for appealing the quantum decision has not yet expired, I think that it is important to use this opportunity to place on record the approach the Department has taken since the liability decision was issued in May 2022. I also want to use this opportunity to confirm to honourable members that the Department will not be seeking to lodge an appeal to the High Court. The Department would like to thank the Tribunal for their balanced consideration throughout the remedy process. I can also confirm that the Department has put the necessary steps in place with Treasury to process the payment due to Dr Ranson and has made a proactive approach to her legal representatives in relation to the costs award in an effort to expedite satisfactory resolution. Laurie Hooper, MHK, and you've got any thoughts on this matter? If you think we should be doing more on it or in, in any way, I mean, do you think Tim Glover's approach is the right one to opt out, to resign and just see what happens and to be, in his words, proved wrong, prove me wrong, he said. This is not something that's just bubbled up over the last couple of years. It probably was exacerbated by COVID and the situation that we all found ourselves in. But we have to get out of it and we have to get to the other side. So what is the way to do that? On another subject, uh, say your prayers for the Manxman. The Manxman, the steam package new flagship, is on her way, departed South Korea. Uh, seven o'clock uh, our time, I think it was, last Saturday. Uh, Andy Atkinson is the captain. Captain Atkinson's in command of the vessel for the first journey under the flag of the Alabama Steam Packet Company. So she's on her way and uh, will be then heading to, uh, well, I think the first port of call is going to be Singapore. Uh, she'll be there, I think, uh, probably Thursday of this week. Uh, the itinerary also calls for port visits to Colombo in Sri Lanka, Muscat in Oman, and probably a further stop in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia as she makes way up the Red Sea towards the Suez Canal. After the Suez Canal, the Manxman will cross the Mediterranean to Gibraltar. We'll be stopping in Gibraltar uh, before she then heads off to the south coast of England towards the end of June. Uh, she's expected up to a week in port in the south of England, including uh, they're putting final fittings the children's play area, and then she'll be making her way around Land's End before heading to the Irish Sea to the home port of Douglas. We wish her well. We wish Captain Atkinson all the very best for the Manxman's trip uh, to the Isle of Man. I got a note in from uh, Katie who says, uh, My son started reception at Peel Cloth Workers in September, and most days we walk through the ShopRite car park and up the lane to the school. Every time, every time, there's a disgusting amount of litter in the top corners around the car park, the loading bay, and up the lane to the school. I've copied this email into lots of people. If it isn't your responsibility, I urge you to press those responsible to act. An action plan is needed to tackle this. If it's caused by the wind or the goals, then there are ways to secure bins. If it's caused by people, there are ways to deal with them too. I've attached a photo of some of the litter this morning. Awful. It gives a terrible impression to all the children uh, who walk past it every day to school because we allow this to continue. Pleased, we should have a solution. I really would appreciate everybody's support. So if you um, go past the ShopRite car park in Peel or perhaps to uh, Peel Cloth Workers, um, what do you think of the litter there? And how do we actually get back? buy that what do you do about it it's the old story isn't it it will be a few people causing it uh, I also got a note in from Dave McLean at the back end of Man in Line yesterday Dave of course is the doyen of the Centenary Centre set in Peel and Dave uh, obviously is very much involved in promoting entertainment and music uh, and he said Andy regarding the airport regarding Ronald's Way Airport the Centenary Centre is uh, only one of several promoters doing our best to bring high quality entertainers to the Isle of Man and the situation regarding cancelled flights is making it at best stressful and at worst having to cancel shows we engaged a, a brilliant uh, American singer-songwriter called Kazi Blanton to appear at the centre as part of an Irish tour. The show was fantastic. I was walking home after the show on the Saturday night and at ten past eleven at night received a text from Aer Lingus to say her flight the following morning was cancelled due to operational reasons and she was rebooked on Monday. 
Obviously, this was useless. She had an important gig in Dublin on the Sunday. So at one thirty in the morning, I managed to book her on a flight to Manchester and then on to Dublin on Sunday. It cost £660. So far, after several attempts to contact Aer Lingus, I haven't even had a reply. Dave said this just isn't good enough. I don't know what operational reasons are, but I suspect they hadn't either sold enough tickets or cancelled the flight before midnight, so they could say it wasn't cancelled on the day. It couldn't be the weather, as it was cancelled before they knew exactly what the weather would be. It's our 20th anniversary celebrations in October for the Peel Centenary Centre. We've had several bands coming... Uh, can I be sure that with the exception of severe weather, the bands will arrive and will be able to return? Sorry for the rant, says Dave. Don't apologise, Dave. Um, and remember, this isn't a, a multi-million pound business making thousands and thousands of pounds. This is Dave trying to keep the Centenary Centre together and to bring entertainment, quality entertainment, international entertainment, to peel to the Centenary Centre and being stymied by what happens at the airport. It's always tempting, isn't it, to say it's somebody else's fault and it's nothing to do with me, but surely the buck stops somewhere. Now, that flight must have been cancelled at some point and there will have been a reason for it, but again, Carsey Blanton didn't know that wouldn't care less about that. It just means that the Isle of Man isn't connected to Ireland because somebody somewhere decided to cancel the flight. Uh, more me mentions in, by the way. I mentioned this yesterday, and I got a note in from Benny, who says, uh, can you ask your listeners, uh, can we get that raft put back in Ramsey Bay? It was a fantastic swimming aid, uh, but they haven't put it out this year, says Benny. When is it going to be back? Well, at the moment, we don't quite know when it's going to be back. Were you at the meeting last night at Westmoreland Road, at the Rosemount, for the Westmoreland Road? Uh, um, uh, infrastructure uh, meeting this new village they're putting in people use the word village a lot last night I popped into the meeting parking, a lack of infrastructure and the impact on the climate are among the reasons that Douglas residents say they are against the proposals to build more than 130 new homes in the Isle of Man's capital it's fair to say the mood of the uh, meeting. It was packed at the Rosemount yesterday. The mood was not entirely, not, it wasn't unequivocal. There were some people who wanted some properties, but just about everybody was against the intensity of over 130 new homes. Standing room only in the public meeting at the Rosemount Trinity last night, where the people who live around there had the chance to quiz Ann Corlett and Chris Thomas, the MHKs for Douglas uh, Central, about the Westmoreland Road development. The MDC, Max Development Corporation project, would see the old nurse's home demolished and uh, replaced with residential and office space. It's more being repurposed. I think part of the structure is remaining. Uh, John Moss was there, squeezing in amongst the people. The idea of the meeting last night was this concept of a, a village within a... Well, it's the town, of course, Douglas, waiting, hoping to be a city in due course, with 170 homes, 170, if you include that development behind me there, the old nurse's home, 20,000 square feet of office space, four retail units, all tying into the 20-minute neighbourhood concept. Uh, there are already moves in this whole area, central Douglas, to calm traffic, a living street scheme that's in the consultation stage. Well, the meeting was chaired by long-time local Douglas councillor Stephen Pitts, who's let it be known he's concerned about the local child's play area's future, and with uh, MHK's Anne Corlett and Chris Thomas uh, facing the audience's questions. Well, for the next 90 minutes, the subjects raised range from predictably parking, compulsory purchase powers, use of existing buildings in the island, doctor's availability, school numbers. All I can do is give you a taste of some of the questions from the floor. So here we go. Oh, incidentally, there was a vote at the end. I would for a company at the moment who has absolutely fabulous workers from all over the world who are really attracted to the island. They love it. There's so much to offer. The only reason they cannot be moved here is because there's nowhere to live. It's not they can't afford it. You can't even service the houses, the residents that you've got now. So putting another however many hundred houses up, how will you cope with that? In order to qualify for a mortgage at 5.5 pounds of salary, you need to be earning uh, at minimum 65 grand in order to buy an average home. And one of the reasons why 
housing is so affordable is a function of supply and demand. There just is not enough housing supply in order to meet that demand. That goes back to all those empty properties where we could be refurbishing them, giving them thermal, better thermal potential. Instead, we're pulling down perfectly fine buildings to put a whole load of other buildings up. How does that help our carbon footprint? We've got 6,000 vacant properties on this island that could solve the housing problem at a stroke. It might even be that MDC are operating out with their remit. In fact, the planning may be illegal in that way because when MDC were first set up, they were set up to develop brownfield sites belonging to the government. Part of the meeting last night at the Rosemount. If you were there and if you want to comment on it, then please get in touch. Parking. Parking excited the most, um, uh, how can I put it, exciting debate. And one of the points was made was that uh, Domain Road, of course, some fine houses on Domain Road there, originally were houses where one family lived. Now, a lot of them, perhaps most of them, have been turned into apartments. So what used to be one house with perhaps a couple of cars has now turned into three apartments with possibly six cars attached to it. And the parking around there is very, very competitive. Uh, the people also said that when construction started, there'd be uh, mayhem with construction vehicles. There are commercial premises up and down the main road. There's a supermarket in there. There's a, um, a canine welfare center. There's also a, um, a kindergarten area. There are car retailers. There's a uh, car repair shop in there. So how is all this going to work? And the feeling was that this was an idea from Manx Development Corporation that it was something that they were determined to steer through with the help, possible connivance of government because Manx Development Corporation is independent. They call themselves an exciting new company operating at arm's length from the sole shareholder, which is the Isle of Man Treasury. They say they're there to make a long-term contribution to urban and brownfield regeneration on our beautiful, vibrant island, they say. We want to share with you how we intend to make a difference. Was there a representative from Manx Development Corporation last night at this meeting with all the people around there? No. Nobody from Manx Development Corporation attended. Nobody, as far as I'm aware, even sent a message to the meeting to say, we'd like to, but we can't. The chair was Stephen Pitts, And lots of people made a point just saying that you need to get involved in this if you live in and around the area, or if you have something to say, you need to contact the the planning process. You need to make your representations. Obviously, the way we live is going to change if this is going to be the norm. This uh, 20-minute city, 15-minute city, whatever you want to call it, if we're all going to zoom around on e-scooters, in formations like the Red Arrows, how is it going to work? How are you going to stop people having cars? And if people do have cars, where are they going to park? Last night, no one from Manx Development Corporation, so we know everything is going to be rented, but nobody said who's going to collect the rents, who's going to be the landlord, what the length of the tenancies are going to be, whether people will be allowed to have children there or pets there. Nothing. So we wait to hear from Manx Development Corporation. And if Manx Development Corporation is listening, do get in touch. Wolf's with us now. Where's the raft? Right, right. Now, the raft, I am told, is up in, in the commissioner's yard. What's happened was it was put out and uh, it got loose for somehow. And it ended up high up on the beach and it was all right. So it was put back down again, fastened down to the block again. And then the second time, there was an uh, uh, inshore gale, and it either got smashed where it was or smashed against the wall. Because the last time I seen it, it was tied up against the prom wall with one side all smashed. Now then, I've been on to them, and they said it's going to be repaired. So... I wouldn't hold your breath, though, because you know what they're like. So, so I mean, uh, did they say it might be out for this summer? Oh, oh well, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be back again shortly. But it's up. It's up to our people in Ramsey to 
lobby the town hall and say, get on with it. How badly was it damaged? Well, pretty badly. One side was smashed on it. And, I mean, it was really robustly built. But the thing is, what I can't fathom out is the chain that's on it would hold the Queen Mary. It's as thick as your leg. So I couldn't see that that broke. I could only say that it hadn't been fastened properly because it's fastened with a big C-joint and a screw in it or somebody let it go or something. Well, well let's let, let's let's hope it all gets uh, it all gets mended in time for the summer because it's not too far away. Yeah, well, I think it might have been put down slightly too early, and, and we're still in the gales because it's been down. It, might, it must have been over a month. It's been down, and it hadn't been used very much up to now. But it needs to go down again now. It needs to be fixed right away. I would say that was priority, one of the priority things that should be done. And have the commissioners got the wherewithal or the facilities to mend it? Oh, yes, yes, because I I give them the plans of it, which they didn't follow quite right, and I bought the wood for it. But um, they put it together, um, so they're quite capable of building it again. Right, well, we'll, well, we'll, I'm, we'll, I'm, we'll I'm, wait and yeah. see. We'll wait and see. What do you think the likelihood yeah. of is it, be, it being out this summer, Earl? Well, I will keep at them. I've got a meeting. I've got a meeting tomorrow night, and I will. I will bring it up again. Okay. All right. Tell them get on with it. All right. Thanks, Wilf. Okay. Good All hit. right. All right. Cheers. Now, twenty-eight minutes past twelve. Uh, Jewin's on that. You were there last night, weren't you, Jewin? That was a lovely shirt you were wearing last night. And did you think that colour would suit me? Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> me, me neither. <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was there last night. Um, interesting conversation, and there was good points brought up on both sides. Um, I, I, I feel um, I, I don't know whether it, um, it, it took um, Chris Thomas by surprise the amount of people that was there. Um, it looked like he wanted to go home and watch a TV program. He looked a bit agitated at a few points. <laughs> Um, and I think um, there was one lady there speaking very passionately about um, there was there was um, no housing for people and a shortage of housing for young people. But um, I think that, that no one there seemed to be um, uh, objecting to um, uh, any kind of development there. I think it was the density. I think that that seemed to be the problem, and, and the parking seems to be the two issues. Would you say, Andy? Well, I, I have to say that the the lady who spoke passionately about the fact she said everybody in the room spoke from a position of privilege she said you've all got houses what about people who haven't got houses and I think that often gets lost because the kind of desperation of you imagine a young family or a couple together uh, who simply can't you know are paying a fortune out in rent all the time and they can't get somewhere they can't get somewhere to get the feet on the ladder and I think we have to decide do we want people to get their feet on the ladder or don't we yeah, I, I I agree with that, and I think she made a point about um, a lot of the older houses there now in, into flats, and um, I think Stephen made a counterpoint on that that you know that this this was um, uh, a development that that's made use of old houses basically, which has happened in a lot of cities in in England. You know, your big posh Victorian houses in Manchester all got made into flats and, and repurposed. And remember, because, in the early 1980s, you couldn't give boarding houses away you could buy you know a 12 bed boarding house for under a hundred thousand pounds yeah absolutely and so so they've been made good use of and repurposed um you know to keep the keep the people in accommodation um i think Stephen made the point there last night Stephen moore made the point um we have to be careful about um rebuilding we don't want um, a modern day slum area every so often you get the the you know a clearance of areas like we have the chester street area which was was a slum and was a nice community area at one time um and lord street so what what we're very careful of is is not creating a, another slum area and of course with with all the recent stuff with with the covid trauma um people have been very claustrophobic in some properties that they have they've, they've suddenly realized that their apartments have become very small boxes when you can't get out and do anything so i think having um having space around you and community space is going to be important um if mr gates decides 
decided to sort of have another lockdown. I couldn't so understand, though, well. why why uh, nobody from Manx Development Corporation actually pitched up to the meeting just to show their face. They probably knew they'd get a hard time, but, I mean, these people get paid for, for you know, for, for Manx Development Corporation. It is a government or arm's length entity um, and you know I mean some put it this way at least one of the members of Max Development Corporation lives within about a hundred yards of where we were last night so um, the fact that they they don't say a word and kind of fold their arms and look at us and just say well you know we are an arm's length organization treasury is our shareholder that nobody quite knows what it's for is it there to make money is it there to make a difference is it an agent of social change what is manx development corporation there for apart from as they say to develop brownfield sites and all, all them questions that you, or all them points that you made earlier on. I mean, at the moment, it's, it, 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 you're talking about transparency. It's about as transparent as a bathroom window at the moment. Um, there's not a lot of transparency there at all. Um, uh, and you know, um, Chris Thomas was asked the question about the, the I think it's the C40 cities and the smart cities, and and they're, they're they're coming out with living streets as their version of it. And he he, he denied in a in a one word sentence of no um, that they were allowed with this stuff but it seems very coincidental that all this stuff is happening around the UK and further afield at the moment with these um, smart cities and whatever you want to name them as um, it just seems very coincidental you, you can't help but think yeah. that, 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 that they're doing the same agenda as other places like the playbook has come from somewhere else and like I said the point I made last night again is government um, the civil servants I would take it that, that, that are bringing these initiatives in the higher level civil servants are bringing in initiatives that kind of not going to fit in the Isle of Man, you know, let, let England do what they want to do. Um, and, and again, what was it brought up, was it 6,000 empty properties they ad- identified, Andy? That's right, Stephen Moore mentioned 6,000, but of course a lot of those properties, and indeed there's one there which is not 50 yards from the Rosemount last night, the one that's on the corner of Woodburn Road between Robinson's there and the dentist, it's been empty for yeah. nearly 30 years, you know. The yeah. pigeons yeah. have written to the council to complain about the conditions inside side. Yes, indeed. Um, and, and the point was made there last night, if, if there was an initiative to get these um, properties back in use, that would kind of put a big um, a, a big dent in, in the um, uh, people that were looking for properties. It, it's just on what we've actually got there at the moment that's right. actually up and standing. So I think, you know, I, I think we have to be very careful of, of what kind of new builds that we have for the future. And but fair like, play. I mean, fair like, play to the two MHKs. I mean, uh, Chris Tom Thomas, and I'd certainly know, well, both of them, Ann Call and Chris Thomas, are both very hot on constituency matters. And they sat there and, uh, Jew, and they took it, didn't they? They did, you know, and my point that I made to Chris Thomas, again, bearing in mind what was said at the landlord's meeting the other week, is uh, Chris was quite happy to say he was there to listen. But I'm just wondering what information he actually took with him and what actually went straight through and out the other side. Because listening to the landlords, the, the government seemed to just want to do their thing. They're just lip service to the people and listening to what they say, but they seem to be hell-bent on, on doing what they want to do which is not what they were put in there for or elected for. They're, you know, they're elected for the, for the benefit of the people All right. um, and not to do their own thing. Um, so, yeah, again, um, well done for Stephen for, for getting, the, um, getting the thing going. Um, definitely a very interesting meeting. OK, thanks, Stuart. Good to hear from you. Yeah, All right, yeah. 25 to 1. This year's Mental Health Awareness Week theme is anxiety. Why not take five, step outside and breathe off fresh Manx air? Ramsey Crookle, supporting Mental Health Awareness Week on your nation station, Manx Radio. A note in from 601 said, Andy, I met Tim Glover recently, the MHK, and what I found was a very sincere, genuine bloke in the job for the correct reason. I would support him in his decision to resign from government. If that's where his heart sits, sometimes we all have to make tough decisions, says Barry on 601. Uh, I and many of my friends and people I know think that all involved in the Dr. Ransom case should resign or be sacked. This is Texter921 who says that, uh, or we'll see the spin doctoring 
they do to save their behinds. Thank you, Gary. But again, which particular ones? Remember, this straddles how at least two administrations. Many ministers as well. So how do we... You can't sack everybody. Anybody who had... And, at, at what level do you sack people? It's, it's worth pointing out, remember, that the chief minister um, got rid of quite a lot of senior civil servants uh, last year. A lot of them went. So, obviously, the chief minister has got things on his mind where this is concerned. And it surely isn't the case that nobody knew anything about this or the culture that prevailed before the Dr. Rosalind Ransom case. If the lady walks past the rubbish every day, why don't she take a bin bag and gloves and pick it up and set an example to her children, says 847. If you, Andy says, if you look on the vessel finder AIS, shows Manxman's been at the same position off the coast of Taiwan for 12 hours, and apparently her next destination is Hong Kong, due there two hours ago. So it's a bit confusing. Has the SPC made any reports or um, any comment on this? So is the Manxman going to Hong Kong or is she heading on to Singapore? I, Chris in the North said, and I do hope the play equipment isn't being fitted by the people who fitted the flumes. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure Wolf's got his eye on it. Uh, Pauline says, Andy, since when does a village have high-density, multi-storey buildings, no trees, no greenery or open breathing spaces to offset all the concrete sprawl? Governments trying to encourage the community to become green, yet they're creating the absolute opposite in Westmoreland Road. From our castles to our cottages, our museums and the Great Laxey Wheel. You'll find hidden treasures around every corner when you visit a Manx National Heritage site. Fill your summer making treasured memories with Manx National Heritage. Sites now open every day. By visiting, you help protect our treasured island for generations to come. Plan your visit today at manxnationalheritage.im. At Mountain View Innovation Centre, we're all about finding new, innovative ways to do things, and that extends to our food. Right now, we're looking for a catering partner to run our on-site Babbage's Bistro and Bar. With a unique revenue-sharing model, you pay no rents, no rates, and no energy bills. So, if you want the chance to really make your mark on the island's hospitality industry, hit the Catering Opportunity button at mvic.im and find out more. Got a nice motor to sell? Come and see us. We are number one. We are family run. Mike's Motors. Mike's Motors. At Mike's Motors, we don't just sell nice motors, we buy them too. So if you have a nice camper van, motorhome, car, van or commercial vehicle, we'd love to take a look at it. And if we like it, we'll make you a nice offer. Get in touch. Visit mikesmotors.im or call 823 200. Mike's Motors. That's 823 200. These days, time is a precious commodity. It's difficult to balance work, life and play, but enjoying quality rest and relaxation is essential for our overall well-being. We need downtime, time for ourselves, time for stressless. At Millichaps of Ramsey, most stressless recliners come in multiple sizes, so you're sure to find the perfect fit. Relax your body, free your mind, and discover the ultimate in comfort in the stressless studio at Millichaps. Who's the king? Work it out, and you could win an amazing prize from the King Spa in Onken. From Monday to Friday, we're celebrating the King Spa's fifth birthday in style with some great prizes to be won. Check out the image on manxradio.com and fill in the competition entry form to get into the draw. Then be listening at 5pm on Friday to see if you're our weekly winner. Don't miss your chance to be treated like royalty. Who's the king? Every weekday with the King Spa Onken and your nation station, Manx Radio. The Man in Line. Daily interaction, debate and exchange of ideas. Broadcast on Manx Radio from midday till one, Monday to Friday. Also, something interesting that was said last night by Chris Thomas about 
public sector housing in Douglas and the plans that Douglas Council have, which I'll uh, reveal to you in just a few moments' time. A note in from Helen said, Andy, that previous text about shop right and peels, absolutely spot on. The top corner of the car park is so full of litter all the time. It looks to be mostly from the loading bay to me. Lots of blue roll and wrapping plastic. So who's responsible for keeping it tidy? And uh, whoever it is, why don't they want to keep it in good order? I was up in Ramsey last week. The raft was in the water by the harbour on the beach side at the entrance to Meseron, says uh, 318. Let's hope they get it but, um, uh, mended. Um... And a note in from, this is from uh, 009, I was one of five people in a high position for DHSC, as it was then. We were bullied by our uh, manager. Uh, three took early retirement because of this and two found um, other jobs. Oh, so people were aware of this and did nothing. It caused lots of stress and they lost five valued members of staff. Chief Minister said last week it'd be very surprising if in an employer the size of government, bullying wasn't going on and there wasn't this sort of thing. So this is such a, a, a job for somebody. It's not just restricted to the Isle of Man. Public bodies find this all over the Western world and probably elsewhere. It's just how you cope with it and what you do with it. Uh, not just packed last night, says 8.05. Uh, I and a number of other people were turned away as the venue was full. Uh, there's so many recovery trucks blocking the road, so let's build flats and so uh, Quick Fit can shift somewhere else, uh, says Mike. What's going to happen when all the construction vehicles well at the moment there are construction vehicles there anyway because they're uh, getting the old nurses home ready for repurposing uh, more messages in concerning this uh, a i saw a group of qe2 people uh, qe2 pupils sitting on the wall outside peel shop right just dropping cans of food and containers on the ground says Chewin. quite what you can do about that i mean you could you could approach them and get a mouthful of abuse but quite why young people really should be and we, we always say that the the we're in the hands of the young for the future it's a generational thing but the young people are supposed to care about the earth the most so why young people should be littering heaven knows constantly building new properties is bad for the environment says 068 conky productions very polluting far better to renovate existing buildings says uh, 068. The census said there are 6,000 empty properties on the Isle of Man. Once a property has been empty for 10 years, surely the authorities should compulsorily purchase them. The utilities should know if a property is empty by whether any electricity is being used. 6,000 empty properties. And a note in from 931, the domain road development is not designed for first-time buyers. These properties are for rental. So what will the expected rents be for this? Uh, says 931. Again, the questions are, who's going to be the landlord? of a landlady, if you like, of these properties? If they are rental for essential workers, uh, to give people a step up, how long are the tenancies going to be there? If these are nice properties and they look like they're going to be nice properties, the top ones are going to have fantastic views. So will people actually want to leave? Will they be fixed-term tenancies? And again, part of the... If there are no parking spaces and they do have a car parking space, what's going to happen? Where are the cars going to go? Douglas Council apparently are exploring plans worth tens of millions of pounds to develop different forms of housing. At the meeting last night for the Westmoreland Village project, Infrastructure Minister Chris Thomas, MHK, touched on this. Tens of millions of pounds to develop different forms of housing for Douglas Council. The corporation has, uh, has done what I hoped they would do, which is they've gone away and they've put together a, a 10 year plan. Um, huge amounts of money, huge ambitions uh, well, to expand. Um, or, 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 there are still some parts of the public estate in Douglas that haven't been uh, modernised. We've also got some of those in, in, in the DOI. For instance, Jervie hasn't so had the work done. So they want to attack it. the problem of re re renovating old houses? Well, their own, their own stock and also think so. Their role in this um, project on, in Westmoreland, uh, on Domain Road, there, Westmoreland Road, would be um, 
is envisaged possibly as having sheltered housing complex inside inside that. Um, the use of this thing is proposed as key worker housing, perhaps that sheltered housing or another public purpose use. And uh, I was glad that the councillors could come along and yeah, I've hinted that they've got big plans that somebody needs to finance if they're going to go ahead because it's, it's, it's you know, tens of millions of pounds. Well, at the meeting last night, one uh, Douglas councillor chaired the meeting. It was uh, Stephen Pitts, veteran uh, councillor. Devon Watson was there. And also, I think the mayor was there as well. If you were there and if you've got any thoughts on the matter, I'd love to hear what you, uh, what you say about this. Uh, and a message in from Pauline again. Oh, this is uh, about the village again. When does a village have high-density multi-storey buildings, no greenery, no trees, open breathing spaces to offset all the concrete sprawl? Governments try to encourage the community to become green, but they're creating the absolute, uh, the opposite in Westmoreland Road. Uh, I got a note in also from Wesley, who says, uh, it was mentioned last night, who owns, uh, there is a Brownfield site further down on Westmoreland, Mullen Road, who owns the old Milcreasts um, car park, uh, the uh, the car showroom, do you remember? Just by Howland Robinson, Normal, Norman Howell and uh, Millie Robinson's poster place at the bottom, which is still empty now. Who owns that site there? Do you remember at the back of it was turned into a multi-storey car park, but the front of it is still uh, a brownfield site opposite the children's uh, play area. More questions, um, and really more questions than answers, about the Westmoreland um, village scheme. Everything is Dell Dell Delicious at the newly opened Woodburn Deli on Dalton Street in Douglas, just around the corner from the terrace. Whether you want to treat yourself to something tasty, from meats, cheeses and charcuterie, to pies, bakery products and coffee, or perhaps you're looking for a lovely gift, then choose Woodburn Deli for a wide range of hand-selected products you won't find anywhere else, including chocolates, drinks and hampers. Woodburn Deli. Fine foods and gifts. Open seven days a week. Roses are blooming at Ramsey Garden Centre. And with a variety of hanging baskets, summer bedding, fruit and ornamental trees, plus a full range of garden essentials, there's never been a better time to visit Ramsey Garden Centre. Open seven days a week. Athol Garage in Balasala doesn't just service and repair any make or model of car. They also operate a recovery vehicle to rescue you and your vehicle from anywhere on the island. See? Aren't you glad we went to Ethel? For top quality work from Nissan factory trained technicians, dedicated aftercare, and now recovery to Ethel, a garage to swear by, not swear at. Book now at athol.im or call the A team whenever you need them. 820082. Sport has a new home on social media for Manx Radio, where you can keep up to date with all the latest sporting action on the Isle of Man. Our new dedicated Manx Radio Sports Facebook page is now live, bringing you all the latest sports news and features. So whether it's Motorsport. <laughs> FC Isle of Man. Don't have to go in! Oh, unbelievable! Manx football, rugby, hockey, and much more besides. Make sure to like and follow Manx Radio Sport on Facebook for all the latest updates. On air and online, this is your home for sport on Ireland. The nation station, Manx Radio. The man in line with Andy Wint. 11 minutes before one. A uh, note in from Steve says, uh, Dewan's spreading misinformation. He said that if Mr Gates decides to have another lockdown, this is plain baseless conspiracy theory based on misinformation and should be flagged as such says Steve. Thank you, Steve. Well, it's Dewan's opinion. It's an honestly held opinion, Steve. And your opinion is that Dewan is wrong, so we have two opinions and people make their own mind up. Thank you, Steve, for that point. And uh, housing before yet another scheme. The government and Douglas Council need to put their own housing in order, says John. I don't know whether you remember, during the election, the run-up to the last election, everybody, everybody was talking, if they weren't talking about green issues, which everybody was talking about first, it was housing on the Isle of Man. So do you think housing on the Isle of Man, is there a plan to solve it? And bearing in mind that, again, the, the government's stated aim is to get 15,000 more people here, 5,000 more workers here. Has the housing problem been solved? 
Uh, the Westmoreland development seems to be another case of we all want more housing, which is affordable, but we don't want you to build it. Yes, it's different, but ultimately, if people want, they will purchase properties, even if uh, they um, if they won't. Uh, the bottom line is build more first-time buyers' houses. It's a priority, says Dave. Well, I think it needs to be stated, none of these are for sale. These are all rental properties that Manx Development Corporation is building. They will be for key workers or will be for people um, in the public sector. What caused the mass exodus of civil servants, says John, on 557? At the moment, we don't know. Lots of opinion, lots of nod, nod, wink, wink, but nobody quite knows. A message from 470 Andy, I'd just like to say, I think Douglas Beach is a disgrace. Why don't they put the groins back in place? We've asked many times, 470, as to why the groins were... Will they be going back? Won't they be going back at the moment? They won't even say whether they may be going back in 10, 12 years or so. So at the moment... Douglas Beach is at Douglas Beach, and we're all talk about uh, we're all taught about cross uh, shore drift and what have you. So at the moment, all the uh, sand is going towards Derby Castle. Uh, a, uh, let's have a look. Dick says, Andy, Rosalind did suffer throughout this entire affair, but a year ago the Chief Minister offered complete change with a government review into how all staff are being treated then and now, but since, nothing. They haven't even asked the team which worked alongside Dr Ranson on a daily basis or any of the consultants she managed. Not one's been asked uh, how they were treated. Did they suffer bullying like Dr Ranson from the same sources or from their superiors or managers as a bully just doesn't bully one person very good point Rosalind wasn't alone in the way she was treated fortunately she had a barrister as a husband to support her but what about those working alongside Rosalind who were treated appallingly by those in power at the time when half the staff in Covid were working from home but it was those who turned out every day in Covid working areas working extra weekends bank holidays under unbelievable pressure which had abuse direct at them when Dr. Ranson was being targeted. Not one word. Did they receive millions in compensation for how they were treated as every bit as badly as Rosalind Ranson? But not once since this has started has anybody looked back at those who were there at the time and asked how they were treated. This is a very real problem. Thank you for that message. A note in also that says, with regards to Mr. Glover jumping ship, uh, can't stand the forthcoming heat, says D uh, Dave. Um, surely he should have stayed in to try and make a difference. I've watched for weeks now, hoping that the coming summer season, somebody senior at the Strand Street Post Office will have the shop front cleaned. They walk through the doors every day. It's quite disgusting that a civic building such as this is in ground with dirt to the frontage. The Strand Street Post Office is filthy. Where is our national pride if we can't even get small things like the frontage of the Strand Street Post Office right? What is the hope? And more messages in, and um, I've had quite a few in. I'll just say this one from Ian, who says, has nobody tried to get hold of Catherine Magson to her, hear her side of the story? Well, we have tried. And at the moment, Catherine Magson is staying very firmly tight-lipped on this. She wouldn't come to the Isle of Man. In fact, um, there is um, some suggestion that she can't come back to the Isle of Man for fear of um, process that may happen if she does set foot on the Isle of Man. So really, in the middle of all this is Catherine Magson, the woman who is now back in Hertfordshire, presumably working, as a self-employed consultant and what her position is, what the terms of her actual hiring on the Isle of Man were, we haven't been uh, entirely made clear. One thing I will point out to our friends at Government Communications is that if you go to the Free Encyclopedia on the web, Wikipedia, if you go to the Department of Health and Social Care page, Isle of Man, you will see that according to Wikipedia, the Department of Health and Social Care's Department Executive, Chief Executive, is Catherine Maxson. 
So if the world looks to the Department of Health and Social Care's Wikipedia page, you will see Catherine Maxson apparently is still in charge. For that matter, it says David Ashford is Minister for Health and Social Care. Just in case anybody's looking, and if anybody knows Catherine Maxson, whether she wants to come on Man in Line and have her say, then uh, we'd love to hear it. And thanks for your messages today regarding this. The way you deal, says Sue, with management bullies is to sack them. And empower employees to speak up with no adverse consequences. Better lose one bad manager than five employees. I'm someone who was bullied out of my government job years ago, says Sue. Two two four says, why don't we introduce the right to buy on the Isle of Man? It would make sure people could buy the public sector houses that they perhaps lived in for 10, 20, 30 years. It would release some money. And the council could use the money from that to build more council houses, more public sector houses. Right to buy on the Isle of Man? Well, it's been mentioned before, but absolutely nowhere. That's it for Man in Line. We're back with another open line tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Thanks to Howie on the phones today. W-I-N-T.